You gonna sing us a song, Ray? We almost are. What would you like to hear? I would like to hear you sing Neil Young while we're getting up, while we're going. <laughs> well, I haven't sang that song in a long time, but you know, the other day I went down into the basement and when I was down there, I conked my head on the roof and it was all dark. And I was lying in a burned out basement <laughs> with the full moon in my eye. <laughs> I was hoping for a replacement <laughs> when the sun burst through the sky. <laughs> there was a fanfare boy. <laughs> and I felt like getting high. <laughs> Look at Mother Nature on the run. <laughs> oh, you didn't plan on that. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my face hurts. Holy <laughs> shit! Yeah. Uh, I, I'll I'll start things off really quickly, guys, because this is the first time we've ever been live on YouTube, and we usually play a song to start the Ray and Adams show. But because uh, YouTube will uh, give us copyright infringement for for playing a, a professional song, Ray decided uh, we didn't know that was happening before the show started. But <laughs> Ray Ray decided to step up. Uh, uh, wonderful rendition, my man. Oh, it's so good. Thanks, guys. So good. Let's go. Pacer, you've got a little announcement to make before we get cracking. Why don't you uh, why don't you tell us the news? Yeah, absolutely. I'm super pumped to be on the Ray and Adam show for 30 seconds to tell everyone that the in play live survive unofficial in play live survivor pool is back. Uh, we had a uh, nearly five figure payout last season and we anticipate well over a five-figure payout. If you don't know how survivor pools work, it's really simple. You pick one winner in the NFL each week. If that team wins, you survive. If your team loses, you're eliminated. Once you've picked one team, you cannot use them again. It's a ton of fun and a great way to uh, have a lot of fun and extend your money a long way from an entertainment uh, perspective for the NFL this year. So if you guys want to get involved with the in play live unofficial survivor pool, all you have to do is DM us on Instagram. Our handle is in play live DM us on Instagram and we will get you the details of how you can get in on this year's survivor pool. It's going to be a great football season. That's awesome. Thanks Pacer. That's great. Are we ready? Yeah, so okay, guys. Yeah. Ray, start us off. If uh, if you're one of the attendees, you know the drill. If you're if you're watching on YouTube, Spotify, or Apple Music, first of all, hit the like button so you 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 don't miss anything. But secondly, you can actually find a link to the live broadcast uh, through one of our social media channels. You can follow in play live on Instagram. You can follow the Ray and Adam show on Instagram or Twitter, and we'll always make sure you have a link so that you can watch this show uh, with hundreds of, well, we're just shy of a hundred today, but you generally hundreds of members who have made more than a uh, hundred grand in, uh, in lifetime profits. So uh, you can hit the Q and a uh, button and, and ask us a question. Uh, we might answer it. We might just, uh, consider it a rhetorical question and and uh, continue, but uh, that's uh, that's I think all we got today. There that's we go. Come on, right on. Yeah. So, guys, super excited about the show today. For those of you who don't know, my name's Adam. The guy who was just talking is my brother Ray. We have a couple of true studs on us uh, on our show today. Uh, there's four of the non-members of Airline Nine on the show today. No deal. Uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit, what that means. Uh, I've got my guys on, my my boy, the new Zach baby. Let's go on a cool show. See, for those of you that don't know, these guys, we're going to talk about it today. They have very, very, very different backgrounds, completely different paths of life on how they got here. They have a couple of things, many things in common that really matter, though, and, uh, you know, one of the things they have in common is they're both up over a million dollars profit um, uh, since joining in play live. Um, that's six zeros and a one for those of you keeping score at home. Um, that is a big number. 
And uh, we're going to talk about all that today. So super excited. We're going to get into how they think and and why they think the way they think. And 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 hopefully we're going to inspire a few of you out there to start thinking like they do. Um, I know uh, I I certainly look up to both of these guys just in in uh, in their mentality and their outlook and, and just the way they look at life. And and I think what you're going to see today is that the way that they look at life directly translates into the success that they've had with this. Um, it's uh, they're both great stories. So Zach, baby, let's start with you. Uh, what did you do before in play live? What was, uh, let's give a little background here. So I was actually um, working for Ontario cannabis. I was a logistics coordinator. Um, so I was doing that full time. And in the peak of the pandemic, we were running seven days a week. We were getting tons of orders, shit like that. And then obviously on the side, I also used to do play up props and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. And, and one of the things that you and I share as a, as a life passion is in uh, youth coaching. Um, I don't, uh, I don't coach my kids in hockey anymore. Um, uh, they're, they're done with hockey now, but that was something that you and I really, uh, really connected on early and, and you're still involved with that. Talk about what you do with the, uh, with the kids and, and all that. Yeah. I love coaching hockey. I mean, I played my entire life as well up until I was 20 and I started coaching when I was 21. I got my first gig with a junior team, which was one of my old coaches and stuff like that. Um, but it's just nice to give back. It's nice to be involved. It's nice to give those kids some knowledge, whether it's in life or if it's with hockey, it doesn't matter. But it's just something fun to do. You know, you do it because you're passionate about it. And that's yeah. the biggest thing for me. Yeah, super rewarding. I know it fills your tank and, and uh, you know, the kids probably, and I, I, it was the same way with me. Like, I never thought about, you know, I always thought it was an unfair deal and in, in how much I'm getting out of it. And, you know, whatever I'm giving back, it, it, it paled in comparison to what it did for me, just, you know, and the satisfaction that I got and seeing the looks on those little kid faces when you, you know, you teach them something or you, you know, you make that connection or you get them going. It, there's nothing like it. Yeah. And there's nothing better seeing where they progressed from September to the new year in December. Oh. And then when you finish the year in April, it, it's, it's, it's one of the bit the best feelings in, in the world to be honest with you yeah and it, yeah. you know it's it's awesome yeah i know uh razors uh razors oldest uh should be getting into hockey and things like that here soon and and i'm i'm frankly i'm a little bit jealous that he gets the experience because i i wish i could still do it it was uh it was some of the best memories i've ever had so it's awesome if he makes him a goal he's got free training for life there you go ray don't make him a goalie. Do not do that. <laughs> Fucking you, weirdos. You fly in for the training too? Yeah, I'll fly in and out. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. That's service, bro. There you go. And Azan, let's hear your story, brother. Uh, I mean, I, I think you guys have heard my story before, but I'll give you guys a little uh, refresher here. I used to be uh, an actuary, went to school for math and numbers and finance and did the corporate world for a few years very much realized that for me, success will come in time freedom, not necessarily in financial freedom. And so then I decided, uh, regardless of how much money I make, I'm going to be doing my own thing with my business partner, Hussein. We tried out a whole bunch of different things, ticket brokering business. Uh, we opened a restaurant, a bunch of different investments uh, until we stumbled on this. Yeah, I... You know, it's really funny as you, when, when COVID first started, I was having a talk with, I've got a number of really intelligent friends, but one of my buddies, Rich, he was telling me about, um, or I asked him, what is the world going to look like when COVID's done? And he said, people are going to define wealth differently. Yeah. They're not going to think about wealth in terms of how much stuff you've got and how much money you've got. Wealth is going to be determined by lifestyle and the things that you can do and, and the experiences that you can have. And I think when all those, like when our freedom was kind of taken away for a while there, where we weren't allowed to travel, we weren't allowed to go see our friends, we weren't allowed to go in public. I think it was a reminder to everybody what a what an awesome thing it is to have the ability to just go do whatever you want to do. And that's one of my favorite parts about In Play Live is the freedom that it gives us, right? Like, like there's, you find me, you find me any job with more freedom than this. And, you know, like, I don't know. That, no, and, and then that's just it, right? Like, I, you know, someone like my sister looks at me and she's just so proud. Oh, my God. Like, he's made it. He's rich. And people, it, 
will always, and she always reminds people, he's not rich because he has money. He's rich because he gets to wake up in the morning, do what he loves, and decide every day what I'm going to do. Yep. That's the dream. That's the dream. Yeah. And, and it's funny, it's a bit ironic that COVID, you know, initially took away our freedom, but it also gave us this opportunity to meet each other mm-hmm. and uh, learn this craft that uh, Pacer was so gracious to, to show us all. So it's, yeah. uh, it's, pretty amazing you know what's happened and how adam and i you know you guys are are a couple of our best friends and we live across the country from each other and uh it just it's who what world are we living in right now (laughs) you you said it best man like it's what we got here is special man and that that retreat really opened opened those eyes man to see how powerful this community really is. It's nuts. It's nuts. Yeah. We, Ray and I and, and Zach and a few other guys, we got a taste of it in the first year, but I think there was like 27 of us at the first summit or stuff like that. Like Pacer had to recruit some buddies. So we had enough people to play slow pitch. and stuff. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like it, you know, it was, it, it was tiny, tiny, tiny. And, and that was an eye opener. And then this year we go, and what was there? 125, 100, 140 people, whatever it was. I mean, it, it was really eye-opening. Um, we talked about that a little bit last week. Um, it, guys, let's let's get into kind of your mindset, right? Because one of the things that people really, really struggle with, um, I think it's one of the biggest struggles that people have early on, and then and then even even later on, is getting comfortable with betting more and winning more money, right? Like I'll never forget when I went from a $25 unit to a $50 unit and I was like, fuck, 50 bucks. Like what the, (laughs) seriously, it's doubled my unit. And then like, you know, you get nervous and then you, you know, you you hit a hundred and 200 and 500 and it just keeps going and going and going, you know, how you guys have never had one second of fear of success. At least not that I've seen, at least not that you've shown. Well, that's not true. <laughs> not true. So, so talk about it then. Like, like, Azzy, why don't we start with you? How, how do you get that little voice to shut up? That little voice that, you know, that voice of doubt, um, call it your dark side, call it whatever it is. How do you get that little asshole to shut up um, so you can get back to making money? In my opinion, it's one thing. It's confidence in your ability. Are we continuing to do the right things? And right. it's so go to sleep the same whether you're winning losing it does not matter if your ability is there and we're taking the edge every single time go to sleep the same doesn't matter if you've won a shit ton or you've lost a shit ton it does not matter right but if you're lacking discipline if you're putting more on things later in the night to make up for what happened during the day or things like that and deviating from the system then that's a different story that's when Things need to be reevaluated. But if the ability is there and you're continuing to get in on wagers that we have the edge, that's all matters in my opinion. So focus on the fundamentals, right? Zach, when it's probably the same when when a goalie's lost his way, right? Oh shit. You know, get back to the fundamentals. Yeah. Yeah. So even when you let in a softy or whatever on the red line, right? You still gotta get back in there and get back to work. That's the biggest thing. Man. Right. Um, yeah. Maybe we should but, get Mike Mike Smith to join. He, yeah. He's got lots of experience. Mental yeah. resilience to the max, right there. I don't know <laughs> if he's mentally stable like that. Well, well I'm, I'm pretty sure he's unemployed, though. <laughs> yes, 100% he is. Maybe he should join in play live. He'd fit right in here with you, bunch of get right. <laughs> we're we're going to try and get him on the, on the show next week. Okay. <laughs> we're going to work on that. That'd be good. I think. So just to add to what Azan said, I think it's also has to do with the data that we have here at In Play Live, right? That's a huge factor in the decisions that we make here as well, right? So it's a little bit easier to put that money in knowing that we have an advantage. Like we have an advantage as, you know, the sports better, right? Yeah. Guys, when like my In Play Live experience really, really changed when we formed our, our side group. And it it was kind of starting to form prior to um, last year's summit. And then we cemented it there. 
Then we added a couple more guys. Now we've got this group. They're called the Carolina Nine. <laughs> As he's the newest member, it's a full-on family. Now, the story on why we're called the Carolina Nine, you know, much like any name that happens, it's kind of underwhelming. It's not like, you know, like how did it how did it even happen, Ray? Was it Charmy came we, up with? We were just watching so I think we were watching college basketball and Charmy was just yapping away as he does. And I think, I think he was talking about a friend of his that took a job in Carolina. And then uh, he noticed that there were nine of us. And then we just, just we went with it. I mean, next thing you know, we're singing James Taylor and, and uh, going to my nine, I'm going to Carolina. <laughs> and, and it was born. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And it's like, what was so impactful for me, you know, we all come from different walks of life. We've all got different backgrounds. Um, but in that, in that chat, we're all equals. We're, we're all peers. We're all brothers, you know, and, and, you know, like for a guy like, like Zach, who, you know, he doesn't need us and he's just killing it um, on his own, but you, you know, you contribute, you get something out of it. You know, we work together. There's, there's perfect trust, right? Like, like when we're doing a basketball um, huddle together and we're, we're cooking on that. If somebody calls out a one unit wager on, on college basketball, I don't even look at the line. Like it's just auto like, okay. So, you know, somebody said it, let's go really, really changed my experience. But then also, you know, as you were on an Island, you were doing this all on your own up until very recently. And it's one of the things that I, I actually don't know how you managed to do because the emotional roller coaster that can happen within play live is so much easier to flatten out. If you've got people that you can talk to just all the my time brain. to get you going, you just can't, right. what's that? I said, don't discount my business partner, man. He's saying he's with me there every step of the way. Right. And, and you're right. Like, it's an emotional roller coaster, what we do. And if you don't have a good support system in your life, it can be tough, man. Like early on, there was a lot of points in my life where I'm like, dude, I don't know if this is right for me. I don't know if I can figure this out. And, um, and you know, if I didn't have my sister there every point of the way being like, did you deviate from what they're doing? No. Are you learning? Yes. Then you have to keep going. Right. Yeah. I had to stand in my corner telling me this thing, but it, it goes back to the same thing. I wasn't on an island by myself. Everybody needs that support system. It doesn't matter who you are. Everybody needs it. Well, we had yeah. some good conversations too before we even met Azan. The right. amount of times I would reach out to Zach without knowing him. And, and that's the power of this community, man. Everybody is very approachable. If you are vulnerable and you are willing to learn, there's not a person who's not willing to help you. Yeah. And like, I think and there's some, some lessons from the, from your support system that you only need to hear once too. Right. Like, like uh, when you lose a bad wager and you're still bitching about it, uh, like Zanus, I think you were one of the first ones to kind of show me that there's just no fucking room whatsoever for that. Just shut up. You're a grown man. You made a good wager. It lost. Move on and and let's get the next one. And uh, I mean, I try and pass that that along to to some of the newer guys. And um, I, I think it's it's absolutely necessary not only with this but in in life and and uh uh so th thanks for uh setting me straight early on yeah no problem but i feel yeah, like that's one of my you helped me a lot early on too man i'll never forget it <laughs> well, I, f I feel like that's probably one of my biggest assets is i'm always even keeled i don't get oh. too high i don't get too low i'm just somewhere in the middle happy <laughs> you know yeah. like it's, it's well <laughs> Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> well, and, <laughs> but, <laughs> and Zach, let's talk about how you do that in your, in your, you know, just your day-to-day -day life as well. I mean, I, you know, I had just gotten to know you. We were just starting to, you know, start to work together. And um, one day we get this, this message from you and it's, Hey guys, I just had a really bad accident. I'm heading into surgery. I'm not sure I'm going to survive. Um, uh, love you guys, you know, hope I talk to you soon. And my first reaction was, does anybody have the password for Zach's betting accounts? And then my <laughs> second reaction was, fuck, I hope he's going to be okay. 
Yeah, we're but in not. all seriousness, like we were scared shitless. Like we get this message from one of our brothers and we're like, what the fuck is going on? Talk about your journey recovering from this injury. And then I want to talk about what I've seen you do th- during that time. Yeah, it was a pretty gruesome injury. And honestly, it just happened out of nowhere. It happened so quick. And um, so I ended up spending seven days in the ICU. I cut my leg really bad. I lost a liter of blood. I cut my Achilles. Um, I cut two nerves in my in my leg as well, a bunch of tissue, muscle, all that stuff. So I spent seven days in the ICU, spent another two days in the ward, and then I got released. Um, but for that first month and a half, two months, I had a nurse in here every single day. I couldn't even wipe my own ass. Like that's just how bad it was. Couldn't shower myself, couldn't do anything. Yeah. It was it was a very dark time, but at the same time, you gotta stay positive because there's nothing you can really do. Right. I mean, the situation is a situation, and you just gotta deal with it the best that you can. And I have a really good family, really good friend group. You guys were awesome throughout the entire process too. Um, so I'm forever grateful for you guys as well. I'm sure you guys know that. But um, yeah, it's just what's up. I said, look at this perspective, man. You you went to hell and back, and like I don't think I've heard you bitch about it one day. Before. No, that's that's the punchline here, Azzy. Is there wasn't one second that nope. I watched Zach feel sorry for himself. Not one. He gets out of surgery. Boys, I got lucky. I made it through that surgery. I got to go back for another one. Hopefully it works. He was pissed yeah. that he didn't get the UFC picks in because I think it happened on a Saturday. <laughs> did he did exactly. bitch about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, like it reminds me of of something that that my dad taught Ray and I. And, and he said, you know, like there were lots of great, great nuggets that that he dropped on us. His name was Al. And, and, and one of the things he'd say, he told me, he goes, Adam, son, it is physically impossible to feel sorry for yourself and be happy at the same time. You can't do it. Right. And what do we all want? Like, as you talked about, um, you know, you're rich. Well, the truth is you're rich because you're happy, right? Mm-hmm. Like you talk about all the other things, all the other things just contribute to your happiness. And that's all any of us want, right? We just want to be happy. And you can't be happy if you're feeling sorry for yourself. It is not physically possible. Those two things cannot coexist, self-pity and happiness. They can't exist. And honest to God, like every every step of the way with Zach was just, hey, got lucky. I made it. Hey, let's go. Life's good. Let's go, boys. Like every time. Yeah. Class half full at all times, right? Absolutely. And And then, you know, it's one of the things that I got put in check on early. And I know Ray, you, you know, you just alluded to it. You lose a bet and you, um, you know, all you talk about is the loss or what a bad beat it was. Well, you know, the law of attraction and look, if you guys don't think the law of attraction is real, pull your head out of your ass. It is fucking real. Like it is, it is as real as anything else in this world you are what you think about. And when you think about things that are good, good things are going to come to you. When you focus your attention on losses, you're just going to get more of them. You know, for those of you who are not involved in in play live, one of the things that we do, and this isn't a, you know, a trade secret or whatever, but one of the things we do is pacer fires a green gun when we win. And then everybody who's in on that win, they shoot a green gun emoji in the chat. And some people don't get that, right? They think, oh, what a stupid green. Like, who gives a shit? You're celebrating the win and you're reinforcing it to the universe, to whatever you want to reinforce it to that. Hey, thank you, sir. Can I have another? I want more of that, right? When you sit and you bitch and you focus your attention on the losses, you're just going to get more of it. We do it in golf all the time, Ray. What do people do when they talk about their best round ever? They talk about their, oh, I had my best round ever, but you know what? I made a bogey on 17 or I made yeah. a double on, right? Every time. Every the time. first thing you say, yeah. I had the best round of my life. And then they tell you about the fuck up they had. They don't talk about the birdies. They don't talk about the, you know, the 60 foot putt they made on the fourth hole. They talk about the mistake. Well, what do you think you're going to get more of, right? Forget about that shit. Focus on this, on the win. Focus How on how many birdies. Are. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Uh, can I tell you guys a story about, about our dad that I think summarizes it so beautifully? I, I've never told this story on the air. So our dad, he died of cancer. Uh, how, fuck, how long ago, Ray? Like 10 years ago? Coming up on 10 years, I think? Eight, 2013. Eight years. Right? 2000, uh, nine years. Yeah. So 
Nine. So a few years before he died, um, he had this lump in the back of his leg and he was going through treatment on a different, um, uh, different type of cancer. And so the surgeon saw this lump in his leg and said, oh, I think it's just a side effect from, uh, from your other cancer. Um, it's just a lump. We're just going to remove it. And so they removed this lump and then he, he, uh, we were celebrating Christmas at my place in Edmonton that year. So, so the whole family's there, raised there, everything. And we get the notification, we get the call on Christmas Eve that the lump that they took out of the back of his leg was cancer and that they didn't remove it properly, which, which meant that it went from being something that probably wasn't going to hurt him to something that was almost certainly going to hurt him because they, it was this perfectly contained ball of cancer that they removed wrong and, um, and left I mean, these it, little tendrils. I, I think chances are it still would have got him, but had they got more margin, it definitely would have uh, made the next few years a lot better and likely given them a few more too. For yeah. sure. And, and so, you know, like he goes, okay, uh, he goes like this. He, whenever he had to think, he'd, he'd lick his fingers and go like this. Go, hey, just, just, go. A minute, just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. He said, just a minute. I need a minute to think about this. So so he went downstairs to the basement. And we gave him some time. And, and we're sort of talking to my mom and, you know, trying to figure out what this all means. And then I waited like 30 minutes. And I go downstairs. And I said, should I go check on him? Yeah, I go check on him. And there he is. He's got his computer set up on my bar. And he goes, Adamson, get over here. You're not going to believe this. And I said, what's up? And he shows me he's got prosthetic legs loaded on his screen. And he goes, look at how this leg behaves. He goes, look how lucky I got here. He goes, if this would have been in my left leg, I'd be fucked. I wouldn't be able to golf. He goes, this is in my right leg. I'm a right-handed golfer. Watch how it behaves. I'll be fine. This is fuck all. He goes, we got so lucky on this one. And he wasn't being brave, you guys. He wasn't being brave. There was nothing about, like, my dad, our dad was not a brave man. He was just amazing at resetting and locking in whatever the new reality is and then making the absolute best decision he could from them, from there. And he did, like, he, you know, like, it ultimately got him, but he played golf. <laughs> yeah. He played golf with it. He, um, you know, like he, there wasn't a second that he felt sorry for himself. Not one. He reset like that. And, you know, I don't think I've ever told you that story, Zach. Um, but your, you know, the way that you approached it, um, you know, my dad would have been super, super proud of everything that you did there. It was, it was amazing. Appreciate that. That's, uh, That's he, uh, the, the, I think the biggest thing is like, you don't really have time to feel sorry for yourself. You have other things to worry about, right? Like, well, if you're example, doing it right, you do. Well, yeah, and like your father had kids you had to take care of, so yeah. your mom, right? Yeah, exactly. So you don't really have time to, you know, feel pity or anything like that. No, yeah. he, he looked at life as an opportunity, which is what it is, right? He can look yeah. at being a victim of what he's in, or he can look at it as an opportunity. And he was like, okay, this is my situation, and I may still have an opportunity to golf, so let me figure out how I'm going to do it. Yeah. The, the other kind of funny part of that story is the course we grew up at in Regina, there was a one-legged golfer at that course. His name was Muzz Lydier and he was just a beauty and he was a fucking lethal sandbagger, like amazing putter. He <laughs> went every net tournament and he, and he didn't play with a prosthetic leg. He like spun around on his one leg. And wow. I remember when I was first learning how to play golf, um, I'd be in the backyard because we had this meadow and I'm hitting balls and there'd be my dad. He's swinging on one leg and he go, you know, I think I'd be a pretty good one-legged golfer. <laughs> <laughs> and he's goes, oh, he goes, part of the problem is this other leg's in the way. I got to bend it up. If it was chopped off, it'd be way easier. I know I could do this one-legged. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, guys, let's talk about, um, you know, the, the excuse. Like, I mean, we don't need to beat a dead horse, but you guys don't make excuses. You guys, you know, there was never a point where, you know, you guys said, well, if I had the books that, you know, our American friends have, or if I had this, I'd be so much better. Like you guys just got the good books in Ontario. I mean, you haven't even scratched them yet. You're just, just touching the new books. I mean, the, you guys made a million dollars with Canadian limits, which is, you know, really, really shows just how determined you guys are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, wasn't easy. That's for sure. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, for that's, sure. Uh, I mean, there's no time for excuses. You, you deal with what's in front of you and, you know, you go full force. There's, 
Yeah, is it frustrating to not be able to get certain wagers? Sure. But at the same time, you can look at other books. They might offer something different that they're not getting. You know what I mean? Like, there's there's always ways around it. You just got to find it. Yeah. I yes. think we are, you know, his body language and, and what he says right there just speaks volumes, right? Like, it's, it's about who he is. It's like, okay, who cares? We're not going to get 100% of the wagers in, right? It's reality right. the fact we're going to sulk on the ones that we missed getting in and they won. Like, we're never going to have long-term success, right? But I think that, you know, being vulnerable in this world is where you can have the most success, right? Just not getting in your own way, whether that's, you know, having those negative thoughts in your head when we lose or, or, or you not being able to get something in that was a winner for the rest of the team, right? Yeah. Or, you know, to some extent, believing like you already know the answer right there's a lot of brilliant people in this group some of the smartest minds i've ever met yeah everyone who's had success was able to check their ego at the door and be like i'm gonna be the most vulnerable version of myself so i can learn yeah yeah i think and another thing to sorry to cut you off Adam, no, you're good. so i'm not obviously we're not going to talk about strategies but there's something that we do with football right and if you can't get a wager in at the time it's called Keep it in your back pocket because you never know when you might get the same number that these guys just got, right? Yep. So that's another mindset that people got to get rid of. That, oh, I can't get this. I can't get that. I can't get this. Hold on to it. Have some patience. That's the biggest thing. And I think he said it perfectly because this happens a lot in football. But, you know, something gets called. The next play changes the wager we just took, right? It doesn't matter what the play is. So yeah. if you didn't get it in in that moment, don't rush about getting the wager in. Take a step back and be like, why was this wager taken? So that if that situation presents itself again and that number's still available, I will get in. But if the situation has changed from what was called, I'm okay leaving it. Yeah, exactly. Guys, this leads me, it's a perfect segue to talking about what you guys do to better yourselves as sports bettors when you're not betting. Um, you know, Zach, I think I think you really raised some eyebrows in the Carolina Nine when it was it was last year. It's early on in college basketball, and you're waking up at at 5 30 in the morning to start your homework for the day. You I love when athletes, athletes talk about what they do as a craft, right? Like I'm perfecting my craft. I'm working on my craft. You view this like, you know, like Dave Chappelle views what he does as an art. Like you, you look at this as a craft and art. It's a talk about how you work on things when you're not betting on sports actively. Yeah. I, th- I think the biggest thing I actually learned this year was taking a little time off. <laughs> Taking a little chill pill, you know, you need some time to get your mind right, get a refresh in there. You don't have to bet every single day. It's it's a, it's a grind. Yeah. Right. Especially from September all the way to the end of April. Like once hockey starts, basketball starts, it's an everyday thing. Right. So I think like the biggest thing for me is allowing myself that time away from things, getting your mind off things, getting your mind right. Like I, like we talked about, I coach hockey. Like yeah. something that I, I enjoy to do. And then I think another big thing is you got to get some sleep. You got to get some rest. You got to get a good night's sleep, right? Mm-hmm. Which is not easy when you do 12, 14 hours of college football on a Saturday and you got to be up for games on Sunday at one o'clock. Yeah. Right. But you also don't want to wake up at 1230, get your books ready, this and that, right? You want to wake up, have a good breakfast, maybe have a shower, do some research, right? And I think that's why... I always feel like there's more that you can learn. I'm not complacent, even with college basketball, right? Like you said, I wake up at 5.30 in the morning. I'll do my research. I'll write my games down that I like during the day. And I'll go have a bite to eat, have a shower. Next thing you know, the games are on. It's time to go. It's go time, right? So, well, yeah. You you, you look after yourself. You, you know, you, you make sure you're, you're, you know, you're, you're giving your mind a rest because this is the other thing that people might not understand. Like when we finish a 12 hour shift, we are fucking exhausted. Like, cause you have oh. to be on for 12 hours straight. And for anybody who's ever done that in any walk of life, like if anybody's ever been in sales, if you've got, you know, like a full day of meetings and you got to be on all day, like when you're, when you get home, you are 
spent. You're done because you got to be on. And it's the same thing here. Like I was shocked the first day that that we did one where I wasn't just following somebody else. Like I had to actively, you know, like really, really be dialed in. I was fucking bagged by the end of that day. It's not easy to turn your mind off. No. At all. (laughs) Right. So, but I think the beauty of life is, you know, we all get to go to sleep at night and we wake up with a fresh fresh blank paper the next day. So we can learn from our mistakes. We can think about how we can be better, all this stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, for sure. You know, I try there to elaborate on your, on your question there, but, um, you know, when we log on to the stream and kind of lay our wagers here, that's game time, right? If we compare ourselves to athletes, that's showing up for the game, right? That's the fun part, right? And based on the four bodies on this call, if we're not athletes, I don't know what we are. <laughs> for you here on that that's about it <laughs> <laughs> so you know we want to try and make athlete level of athlete level money yeah pick up new careers right so the amount of work that needs to go in behind the scenes is actually incredible and is actually yeah. more important than showing up for game time right mm-hmm. we go to war every single day are you prepared for war are your books funded do you have backup books right like are, are you completely ready so that if on Thursday night of Thanksgiving, we get cut off on three, four books, you still got Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday to get through. Are you prepared? Yeah. Right. If you want to scale this to get to this level of income, do you know the amount of money that moves back and forth, the cash flow problems you run into, that kind of stuff beyond just learning strategies and mastering our craft. There's just a lot of, it can be quoted as, admin work that needs to be done but it, it can't be passed off to a, an admin because this is your money this is your yeah. life yeah exactly and as he you know we've had you on before and you talked about one of the real turning points for you because you lost your first couple months doing this and then um you know i think you said that it was hearing the stories about some of the guys like like zanus and and some of the other guys that were really making it and it inspired you to reassess the way you're doing it and then you went back and decided to attack this with a lot more professionalism, with a lot more um, analysis. Talk about how you track your bets and then how you use that to learn and how to grow and get better. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely a couple years in now. And to this day, it doesn't matter what the wager is. I, I, you know, I have a fairly large unit size. Even if I have a $100 wager, it's still making it into my spreadsheet. And I can't, you know, put enough importance on the value of data. It's what drives this entire business. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, it doesn't matter how many years into this I will be. I will record every single wager. I'll categorize it as book type and wager type and all that kind of stuff. So that if I'm struggling at any point, I can go back and look and filter by that strategy and be like, hmm, why isn't this strategy working for me? Am I getting in too early? Am I getting in too late? Am I not allocating my money properly on this, right? Yeah. All of- we can only look at that if we have our own data. Yeah, and that's particularly important when you are introducing a new strategy to what you're doing, right? Like once we've proven something out, I mean, once it's a strategy that you've, you know, it's tried and true, you know it works, you know it's all you know, you know, you've got it tracking it. You still do, but maybe less important than when you know, you're taking on a new strategy and you don't quite know if it's as good as you think, right? Cause you, you know, you see the wins, you see the losses, but you're doing it in conjunction with other bets that you're making, you know, you see your account going up, but unless you do the analysis, you don't really know for sure. What was the, the cause of that, of that profit or losses. You know, what's funny is that I think there can actually be just as much, if not more importance in diving into that data once your strategies are successful and tried true and tested, because we can always work to refine them. We can always work together. And you're not, you're 90% of the time, not going to look at them because you're winning money, right? You're like, oh, yeah. it matter, right? Like, I know this works. I'm winning, but you could be winning more. You could be refining your strategies even further by having the data of the winning bets too. Right. Yeah, for sure. That's that's why they don't put the the guy with a 400 batting average on the on the uh, leaderboard if he hasn't met the minimum of bats yet, you know, you got to 
You, you got to know it's real. <laughs> That's right. Guys, let's talk about mindset. I mean, I talk about this book all the time. It's called Mindset. For those of you who haven't read it, read it. It's great. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's been kind of my Bible. I know a lot of the people who, who found success have read it and, and, and they quite, they quite love it. Um, you know, it's something that I've had to actively work on throughout my life. Ray, I know you, you know, you work on it really hard, like making sure that you're thinking properly and that, you know, you're attracting the right things and you're not paying attention to the things that are, that are going to derail you. Um, Ray, why don't you sort of talk about that from your perspective, but then, um, I actually have never asked Ali and, and, and Zach this, like, do you guys actively work at it or are you just naturals at it? Uh, Ray, why don't you go first? Well, I, the observation I have of these two, first of all, is that uh, Zanus is the natural and Azzy is the is the studier of, of this uh, trait. Um, but um, yeah, for, for me, I, I think that there is some natural element to it but i didn't even learn about the the law of attraction till i think like 2010 and i i mean for me like i i go through phases of life where i'm like really cooking and and times where i can feel myself getting back in there and then and then you just need a tune-up like you need to do whatever it is you do you need to listen to uh that you know maybe you got to really listen to the secret or joe dispenza or or uh just watch uh that opening seat or that that scene from what's what's St steven will and willie beeman show, show your jersey there you just got to watch al pacino's speech and yeah yeah thanks for putting so, on clean underwear today Azzy. that was pretty well, sweet nice oh, we you. saw yeah didn't see any jersey we just saw your ass it was really nice Thank you. for any money that ipl loses for me showing my ass <laughs> i guess the, the other really big one too is adam introduced me to his life coach uh helen uh a few years ago and i mean that's something that you should do ongoing but i usually kind of do it like like going to the doctor when you get hurt and you need to you need to 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 get pumped up again but every time i do that uh, I just see a, a shift in success. Uh, and uh, th there's so many, so many ways you can do it. The, the key is knowing where you are. You know, the, the whole key is knowing whether you're, you're attracting the good or the bad. So the quicker you can figure that out, the better off you're going to stay on that good side. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, why don't you, as you talk about, you know, how, how you work on that stuff and, and how you cut out the bullshit. Yeah, for me, I, you know, I, I wish I could be as calm, cool, and collected as Zeus over here, but uh, unfortunately, that's not the way I was wired. So, you know, I, I am somebody who, you know, is can be coined as an emotional guy, right? And so, in what we do, you really got to temper those emotions, you got to keep perspective, that kind of stuff. And so, with what we do every day, we train ourselves to get better, but I always have to operate with the mentality that I want to learn and get better every single day. It doesn't matter if I'm 10 years into this or 20 years into this, I'm going to keep that same mentality. And, you know, we have examples of guys like Zanus and, and the community is filled with them, right? You want good yeah. perspective. There's a hundred people you can reach out to that'll provide it. Right. So. Yeah. Zanus, where'd you learn how to think, like, think the way you do, where'd that come from? Not really sure to be. I think it has to do like just growing up as a goaltender. Like you can't really allow things to affect you. You know what I mean? Like mm. let it go. Yeah, you gotta let it go. And like my old man used to use his phrase, "You're only as good as your last save," right? And I speak true to that because at the end of the day, you're only good as your last wager, right? It doesn't matter what you've done before that. And a wager and and a shot on net can be very similar in that sometimes as a goalie you have no chance you could do everything right and still lose that yeah. wager or lose that that uh that save so uh I, th I think it's the perfect analogy that's actually i put on the our instagram that's how that's what i wrote about do you, do you are you on instagram anymore no i had to get off there <laughs> too many moochers <laughs> <laughs> It's guys like me that are flooding his inbox, you know? Oh, no, you were good as all the other clowns. 
<laughs> Zach told me that you were the last straw, as he, he said, when that second is been, on, that, he reached out to me. I, that's it. I'm done. Like, I'm done with his Instagram thing. <laughs> <fucking guy. laughs> I think the biggest thing too is like never being complacent, never being happy with where you are. You know what I mean? Like you always got to work to be better. And there's so many things that you can do to be better and not just with sports betting, but in life as well. Right. Yeah. Never be complacent with what you're doing. So yeah, with that in mind, what's next? Like, you know, I think a lot of us sort of view the summer as, um, you know, maybe not, completely time off but certainly the slower time of the year right um although you know the way that some of the ipl guys have been doing with tennis um that may change next year um we were talking about i know a couple of the guys have uh, been working really hard on some tennis strategies that i think we're gonna turn into to mainstream strategies here soon um but you know this past summer you know baseball some guys, you know, like Charmy, like they were all in on baseball. And then a lot of us sort of, you know, just sort of picked our spots here and there. But we're heading into that busy season, right? Like as of September, NFL's back. By the time October gets here, I mean, anybody who's watched sports ever in their life knows that October is the best month of the year for sports. You've got baseball playoffs, you got hockey starting, basketball starting, colleges or NBA starting, colleges starting. You got you know, the NFL is, is, is rolling. Like you've just got, we've got everything. It is the greatest. So how are you guys? Um, what are you guys doing differently this year compared to years past? Um, are you guys setting bigger goals this year? Like, what are you guys both, both uh, getting ready to do um, starting here in, uh, in about, well, shoot about eight days when we get cracking. <laughs> What's that? I said, so now basically. <laughs> yeah. So now. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I think the great thing about this program is that everyone can define what it is for themselves yeah. and kind of what you learn going forward. I think Zanus and I have both kind of learned that like we grind so hard in the months between September through the end of May going into June yeah. that a reset is required. And going forward, I know that every summer I'm taking at least a couple months for myself. Right. Yeah. But it's not just removing yourself from this because the amount of times during the season last year where I felt underprepared for war, right? Where every single day we have a shit ton of success and I wake up the next day, what, I'm surprised that I'm cut off? Like, how naive of that is that of me to think, right? Oh, I right. thought they would continue to let me hammer them the next day. But am I ready to continue going to war, right? Do I have enough alt artillery to go the next day, right? And I found that that to me was the biggest thing that held me back. So what I've hoped to work towards as we head into war now is just being better prepared. Do you set goals? Love the analogy. Do you set goals? Financially? Yeah. No, never. I believe that people who set financial goals then either tend to reach to try and meet them. They get disappointed if they aren't met, even though they've had a ton of success along the way. Our success is not only defined by numbers, right? A lot of it is skill and ability. Yeah, it's interesting. That's an interesting. I've never heard anybody say it like that. Um, Whenever people, when I ask people what their goals are with this and they ask and they respond with a financial number, it already goes out the window, right? Because that's not what defines us. If people from day one asked me, what do I want out of in play life? It is to be the best version of this that I, that I can be, right? That's yeah. Cool. And It'd, to that, the success will come. It would be like a football coach just telling the team, like, let's win 48 nothing today. Exactly. Right? Like, how about let's trust the process. Let's do what we've been doing all week. Come prepared just the same way we need to come prepared. You got to practice. You got to have all your equipment and then, and then, uh, you know, play the game that the way you, you, you practiced. Yeah. Put your best foot forward and execute the way that you've been taught to do. And that will in the long run will result, whatever financial goals you have, 
But if you are under pressure to be like, I need to make this amount this month by this date, you're not thinking clearly. And we need to have like the clearest minds when doing what we do. Yeah, mm-hmm. That can work mm-hmm. in the reverse. It worked for too, Mr. Though, Burns, right? though. What was that? I was going to say that can work in the reverse, too, though. Right. So if you put a money goal on it, once you reach that goal, you're satisfied. Right. Never be satisfied. Correct. That's why I don't put I don't I don't make goals myself either. Wow. That's super interesting. Huh. I'm actually surprised by that, but it makes total sense now that I hear you say it. Yeah, would have been real stupid if the news was like, no, no, no. This is what I need to make by this. <laughs> <laughs> Razor, no. you're going to quote Mr. Burns there. What were you going to say? Well, I probably something different that you than you were going to say, but I was going to say you there, strawberry, hit a home run. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I thought I mean, you were going to work. I thought you were going to say I'd trade it all for a little more. Yeah. Well, that applies too. Yeah. It's a great line. So Zach, what are you, what are you doing? I mean, like one of the things that I love about, about our group is at the end of the season, you know, we have a little bit of a debrief. We talk about things. Okay. What are we going to do differently? How are we going to, how are we going to start next year? How are we going to ramp up? You know, things like that. Um, Cause we do try to learn every year and, and, you know, really grow every year, but what are, what are some of the things that you're going to do this year um, that maybe you didn't do in the past or maybe you want to do more of this year that you didn't do enough of in the past? Well, I feel like going into this year, I feel like I'm probably 10 times more prepared than I was in the previous years. Yeah. It's because I, I, you know, we kind of understand now what's needed of us and what we have to do to be successful. Yeah. Right? So whether, whether that's getting books ready, opening them, you know, doing whatever you have to do with them, blah, blah, blah. I feel like I'm yeah, probably 10 times more prepared this year. And honestly, it feels good. Ready to roll. Yeah, I bet. You're just, you're like that. Like that horse. Yeah. That horse. You're just ready. Let me out. Let me out. It's time to go. Yeah. 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 yeah it is it's best. a different type of work, but it's still just as rewarding, right? We're, we might not be in there betting and winning every single day, but like we're doing our part to better ourselves for what's upcoming. Yeah. And I do have, a, I, yeah, I do have a goal for this year. So I've one of my buddies joined, I think last year, and he's a truck driver, but he, he drives like 50, 60 hours a week. Right. So it, it's pretty tough for him. And it's a, it's a fucking grind. You know what I mean? Makes like 1200 bucks every week working 50, 60 hours. Wow. That's not very good. <laughs> right. Yeah. So my goal for him is to try and get him out of the truck by the new year. I love this. I'm, I'm going to adopt yeah. this goal. Oh, I got three, four friends that joined in play live and my goal will be to take them to the moon. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty, uh, you know, every one of us that made it at some point, we got some help along the way. Right. And that is one of the coolest things about this community is the pay it forward mentality. Right. Like I was talking to some guys from the golf course I play at, um, but getting them signed up and doing all these things. And they're like, well, what's in this for you? And I said, well, you know, I got dragged along early on. I got, you know, like Razor was the one that got me in. And then I got to meet all these guys. And and had they not stuck their neck out for me, I wouldn't have this. And I feel like I, you know, I I kind of owe it to to the universe to to pay this one forward. Um, this is this is the most limitless thing you could find there is no limit to what you can do with this it's a multi-billion dollar industry you know ipl with with its 850 members or whatever like there's never a point where we can grow so big that we're any more than than you know a a speck of sand at the beach um in the grand scheme of things right like this is a multi multi multi-billion dollar industry we are like hoarding Hoarding sand in the sandbox is stupid or hoarding the toys is stupid. Let's share them with the people we care about. Cause it's true, right? Like good way like, of putting it. Yeah. Like pay it forward, get your, get your guys in there. And when you do use the rain Adam promo code, just saying, um, I guess there is something in it for it. Um, but, uh, um, you know, it's, uh, it's just such a cool community to be a part of. And, and I know, you know, Ray and I, whenever we find something awesome, we want to tell everybody we love about it so they can get it too. Cause it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's the greatest Ray. You know, you, you said it right. COVID took away a whole bunch of things when it first started, but it gave us this because there's no way I would have been able to do this if I had the lifestyle that I did prior to COVID. Right. 
working at the office all week, trying to squeeze in a couple rounds of golf, like for me to convince my wife that I'm going to do this on top of all that, no chance, like no chance, but yeah. And there, there were a whole bunch of people that were just needed to find a way to, to get that thrill. And that's, that's what in play live gave to us. And, but it's funny though, I was just thinking about uh, like our, our friends that we've brought in and some uh, it's completely changed their lives. And, and others that know about it, like just keep waiting for uh, for us to to. I don't know whether they think we're going to give it all back or or whether just like the the runway is uh, come to an end. But uh, it's, I mean, it just keeps keeps getting better. So we'll uh, yeah, we'll see. Super excited for this season. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, guys, we're wrapping up here. Uh, we said it at the at the start, but. Uh, please follow us um, on Twitter at, at Twitter. It's at Ray Adam show uh, Instagram. I think it's the same Ray or at, at Ray Adam show or at uh, or sorry at the Ray and Adam show. Is that what it is on Instagram? Let me just have a check. It, Look this is type in Ray. See, this and is Adam. what we talk about when we say come prepared. You, uh, you, yeah. you just have all the little details worked out. It's Ray and Adam show. Ray Thank and Adam. Man show rain adam show there you go so follow us on social media share this podcast with your friends we're on we're on youtube we're on spotify we're on apple music um and if you have friends who who you want to uh sign up for this thing um if you want to use the rain adam promo code that would be great if you go to my if you go to our tri- our twitter page there's instructions on how to use it it's the pin tweet it's right there so you know if you're listening to this the first time you want to give it a shot um, you know, do that. It saves you a couple hundred bucks a year on your fees, 50 bucks a quarter. Um, but you know, more than that, it's just, it's going to give you access to this community and this lifestyle that for those who've, who've really embraced it. And for those who've really taken it for what it is, it's changed their life. Right. Um, this is, uh, this is the ultimate psychological test, right? You got to be strong to do this. But when you're with a team and you're with, you know, you're with others that are doing it the same way, it's amazing what you can accomplish. Um, so this is proof you can, you can do whatever you want. You know, if you can, you want, if you can win money against the sports books and, and uh, watch sports for a living, then I mean, what can't you do with your life? Yeah. All you're going to do is watch the course. That's it. Watch the course. course. There's a course. (laughs) I, I think you said it perfectly. Look at how different Zanus and I are. Look at how different our backgrounds are. We have completely different paths, but it doesn't matter, man. If you want it bad enough, anyone can have it. Yeah, you bet. You bet. Humble and hungry. Boys, this was so good. This is the best show we've ever done. No offense to any other shows, but this is off. Well, you topped it though, Azzy. You topped it, brother. Um, <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks for coming on, uh, sharing some of your uh, your wisdom and love. And uh, yeah, Ray, you did a great job as usual. I was excellent. Um, you know, like fuck. What more do you want, right? What more Thanks do you want? Us, guys. Next there week we go. we're gonna we're gonna try and get Mike Smith, and uh, if that falls through, somebody we'll, else, uh, we'll we'll be announcing the guest as soon yeah. as we have him. Yeah, that's right. And actually, for those of you uh, putting in your calendar, next week is going to be a Tuesday show. I'm playing in a charity golf tournament for a really great group called the Little Warriors. Um, but uh, so we're going to do it on Tuesday next week and um then we should be back on a uh, regular schedule after that Zanus and i got a golf tournament on tuesday bro <laughs> oh are you shit. coming well, well yeah, you're we not even wild. on next week so go scrub your nuts quit yelling at me let's go <laughs> see you boys let's sign off thanks again for an awesome show thanks everybody Later, have a good one thanks a lot for coming on